know, I, I have a passage about it in the, in the book that I think is really beautiful and I would love to read for you, but I don't think I could get through it without, without tearing up or crying. So, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I should, if I should do that on a live cause you know, I'm probably just going to take it apart, put it on Instagram and put it out for the world to see. So, um, but it is, um, it, it was a, a really emotional chapter. I mean, there's a lot of really emotional chapters that I that I wrote that I really love, you know. Um, I wrote a chapter, the third chapter of the book is me talking about my mom and the circumstances that she grew up in. Um, that I think is one of my favorite chapters that I read. Um, the final chapter of the book is something that's, that's very, very emotional for me because um, it details the moments before I... Um, booked my uh big marvel roles so so yeah um for those of you who are still listening or still um you know wanting to hear about the book yeah the, uh, the culmination of just like so many years of of struggling and and conflict and and perseverance and ultimately triumph which is which is pretty cool um but yeah, you're just gonna have to read the book, guys. You're just gonna have to read the book. Um, wait, let me see. Where is this? Where is the passage that I that makes me cry every single time? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that's tough. That's that'll be a tough one to go. Yeah, I'm not gonna read it. Um, yeah. I'll pick another passage though. Read your favorite quote. Oh man. Um, there's, there's a lot of really good ones in there, in here. Um, I've, been, I've been checking Instagram and on social media a lot and a lot of people have picked out their favorite quotes. So I really, I appreciate those. Um, for me, I don't, know, I don't know if I have like a favorite quote. Probably is probably to do with one of my parents, um, one of their chapters. My favorite quote. This is a little bit. I'll read you a little passage a bit later on in the book where. Um, where I've just started acting, like I've just started kind of finding meaning in my life for the first time. So um, I'll read you just like a little passage. Um, yeah. As the year drew to a close, so too did an era that I would look back on quite fondly. It was a time of my life defined by scarcity, desperation, and self-doubt, but also of the pure and untainted joy of discovering one's true purpose. Like a child, I felt free to run and jump and scrape my knees without giving any thought to the bigger questions like, where is this all going? Or what is your plan? My plan up until that point had been to do whatever it took to get back on a film set. It was chaotic and unstructured, yet totally focused at the same time. I had no idea what would work, so I just did everything. Life is a bit different for me now. I don't check Craigslist unless I'm looking for a good deal on furniture. The characters I play actually have names and my parents only mildly wish that I was a doctor. Yet there are days where I catch myself reminiscing about a time when life was simpler. Not so long ago, success meant a few hundred bucks and a chance to work on a film set. 12 likes on my latest Instagram post felt amazing and Hollywood seemed as far away as the stars shimmering in the night sky. So quick passage here, but um, basically what it's just talking about is, you know, in the beginning, first few months of acting were, were some of the most fun for me, um, even though I wasn't making any money, but it, I was like, I just loved it so much, you know, I'd never been on film sets before and all of a sudden I was like slowly, slowly finding my way back and, and doing it, you know, multiple times in a week, a month. Um, it was so gratifying and so fulfilling. Uh, and, and I just, you know, I just wanted to keep doing it. And so it was just 
so very linear what I had to do. Just keep going, keep checking them, you know, keep pushing. Um, now life is a little bit different. Um, there's all these opportunities coming from everywhere and it sometimes feels like there's no, like there's not enough time to do it all, but it's just like constantly treading water and things being offered and it's amazing. Don't get me wrong. The privilege and the, and you know, the ability to, to really, to, to be making such an impact at that level is, is, I mean, it's extremely humbling. It's very, it's very gratifying as well, but, um, man, those first few months when I was 20, 23 years old, you know, had nothing left to lose, no money to my name. I was just like doing student films for 50 bucks or for free or for just subway token. You know, um, there's, there's something really special about that time. And uh, yeah, I think I think everyone's got to go through it in some way, shape or form because it's it's just so character building and, and so meaningful. Yeah. Uh, thank you for these questions, by the way. They're really, really amazing. All right. How do you stay present to the moment instead of choosing the next achievement? That's, um, that's a really, really tough one. It's a wonderful question. I think even that question is a reminder to me to do that exact thing and try to stay in the moment and not be fixated on the next. Um, you know, I think I've, I've been lucky enough that I've worked pretty much back to back to back to back on movies the last couple of years. I finished Shang-Chi, obviously, but then I went straight into this movie called Arthur the King. After Arthur the King, um, I shot a movie called One True Loves. Uh, in February, I did a movie called Hello Stranger, and now I'm shooting Barbie. So I've shot four movies since I wrapped on Shang-Chi. I've basically not stopped. I'm, and, and, you know, for me, too, I feel like I'm in such a growth period in my career that I can't afford to. And so I just keep pushing and pushing. But there's some days where I'm like, oh, I feel like I'm maybe kind of burnt out. Like, I feel like I maybe need a break. And, and that's just it. Like, how do you stay present to the moment? I think you're... I think you have to really listen to yourself and I think you have to prioritize your health. Um, you know, I think if you grew up like I did, you know, you watch like Gary V on Instagram and it's just like, it really romanticizes this like crazy hustle. And I'm not saying not to do it because everyone's got like, the one thing that I think is true is that you, in order to get to, to a place where nobody else has ever been, you got to be willing to put in work that nobody else is willing to put in. You know, and so um, I believe that, but but at the same time, I also believe that um, you know, you only get so many hours, months, years in life, and you know you can choose to throw it all to your career, but one day you're gonna wake up and you're gonna ask yourself what 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 was it all for? You know, if I can't even if I can't even take the time to enjoy the fruits of my labor with my fa my family, my friends, then what was, you know, what was all of it for? So yeah, I kind of, you know, I, I guess these are questions that are, that are constantly swirling around. I'm constantly trying to navigate a balance because I love work. Don't get me wrong. I do. There's nothing I love more than being on a film set that hasn't been lost on me, but, um, but you know, the, the, the priorities of life change and, um, and they should, you know, you should be able to take a moment for yourself and just just be and self reflect and um, and heal because it's 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 tough out there. Um, but yeah. Um. Oh shoot! I had a I had one up. The question was, are you, are you going to continue writing? And I think the answer is yes. I think once you, once you write a book, you're like, oh, it's, it's not that hard anymore. You know, it's not like a, like an unclimbable mountain. Like now it was like, oh, that was really tough, but I did it. I went through it. I feel like I could do it again. Um, as for what it would be about, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. Let's wait and see how well this one does first and then we'll 
we'll make a decision um, whether or not to do, I guess it would be called a sequel, um, but, but yeah. Um, so anyways, for, for those of you guys who are just joining in, this is the book, this is We Were Dreamers, it came out earlier this week, but um, you know, I'm doing everything I can to drum up sales in the first week, so you know, uh, our, our first week of sales is really, really important for the way, it is just is for the way that things work, the bestseller list, just things like that. Obviously, I re really would love to make it. So if you guys are thinking of buying the book anyway, um, I would I would love it if you headed to like an Amazon or Barnes and Noble and you got the book now because that would be super cool. Um, it's a wonderful book and I promise it's worth your time. It's, um, you know, it, 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 it really is a fantastic, it's some of the best writing I've ever, I've ever done. And, uh, you know, I'm really, really excited to share it with the world. So please, if you can. Anyway, that was dumb. Um, really, really appreciate it, guys. I'm going to go to bed because it's midnight. Um, but I really, really loved hanging out with you and um you know just check it out thanks guys peace out